وسلم حديث authentic narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه he says and he was serious about it stay away from the seven most destructive sins most destructive sins what type of destruction wallahi on earth as well as in the hereafter now i told you already when you seek forgiveness you will be forgiven by allah when you ask allah's mercy he will grant you the mercy so if you have engaged in any sin between you and allah you will be forgiven remember that when a person commits shirk people say he will never be forgiven that's not true the Quran speaks about shirk not being forgiven for the one who has passed away on shirk and did not seek forgiveness. As for the one who sought forgiveness from any sin between him and Allah, Wallahi it is forgiven. Wallahi it is forgiven. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum in Mecca, the Muhajirun prior to their Islam, what were they? They were mushrikeen. They committed shirk that we would not even think of at times. They used to worship things that we or some of our forefathers, limited forefathers have not even done. They are forgiven. Why? Because they changed their lives. They sought forgiveness. If you change your life and seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive even shirk. Don't misinterpret the verse where Allah says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. Allah will never forgive shirk. But he can forgive anything besides that, whatever he wishes. That is referring to a person who dies without seeking forgiveness, without turning to Allah and without changing his or her life. Indeed, which means still Allah can forgive someone who did not repent for any sins besides shirk. What is shirk? Association of partnership with Allah in worship. You worship someone, something besides Allah or with Allah. That is known as shirk. So the first one from the major destructive sins where the Prophet ﷺ says, stay away from seven types of sins that are very destructive. The most destructive sins in this world and the next. Ijtanibu as-sab'a al-mubiqat. Those that would result in your punishment in this world and the next. Destructive. The first one, ashirku billah. Stay away from associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have, turn back to Allah. If there is ever any act that you are doubting, you rather leave it out than to engage in something that might just be wrong. Because those acts of worship Allah wants you to engage in, they are enshrined very clearly. As for those that are not clear, you can actually leave them out. It won't be a problem. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you you need to know in clarity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. The second one, you will be surprised. As-sihru. Magic. To engage in magic, to participate in black magic, to ask for it, to go and seek it, and to be a party of it. All of that is considered al-mubiqat from among those sins that are extremely destructive in the dunya and the akhirah. Why? The Prophet Muhammad says, Man sahara faqad ashrak. Whoever casts a spell has associated partners with Allah. My brothers, my sisters, it is rampant across the globe. Now it is becoming more where people are participating in magic to get things. Subhanallah, people are engaging in magic thinking that by us doing something like this, we are going to achieve goodness, not realizing you are cutting the umbilical cord between you and Allah in a figurative way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Never ever resort to magic or some superstitious dealings in order to achieve something or in order to destroy something. Never do that. It is too costly. It will cost you your Jannah. It will cost you your relation with Allah. Don't do it. Don't go to someone to say, I have a problem. I want to marry a married woman. I need you to cast a spell so that they are divorced. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. People are doing this. And you know what? They are not happy after that as well. Because shaitan dangles a dirty carrot, not realizing that you will achieve nothing from this. Besides shaitan telling Allah, you see, I told you, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ 
ووعدتكم فأخلفتكم وما كان لي عليكم من سلطان إلا أن دعوتكم فاستجبتم لي فلا تلوموني ولوموا أنفسكم Shaytan on the day of judgment will tell Allah, O oh Allah, oh, in fact Shaytan will say that Allah has promised you a true promise and I just gave you a false promise. You are the one who listened to me. I didn't force you to do anything. You came to me with, a, with I had a false promise. You left Allah who had the true promise and now you are here, you are stuck. Don't blame me, blame yourself. That is Shaytan's statement. So my brothers and sisters, we need to talk about this. Magic is something that if a person participates in it in any way, shape or form, they are compromising their relationship with Allah and even destroying it. But if a person seeks forgiveness from Allah, he will forgive them. So if you have done something in the past, seek Allah's forgiveness. Al-Ishraqu Billah was sihr then he says, To commit murder. If a person kills someone directly or indirectly, it is a massive major sin. Because innocent lives are not meant to be taken by people. Vigilantism is not permissible in Islam. You cannot take the law in your own hands and start killing people and hurting people and harming people and thinking I'm doing a good job. No. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So imagine this hadith starts off with seven major things. The first three we hear about them. Al-Shirk, Al-Sihr and murder. So one is association of partnership with Allah. One is magic and one is murder to commit murder. Now you want to hear something dangerous that is following that. Aklu riba wa aklu mal yatim to consume usury and interest, to consume it. Sometimes you may have an amount of interest in your account because of the financial system that you might be living in, depending on what environment, what country you are in and what the laws are, etc. You take that amount and you give it away to the poor Muslims. No problem, but it's not your amount. You don't eat it. You don't eat it. Aklur riba. To eat that is wrong. To consume that is considered minal mubiqat from among that which is very dangerous for you, sinful. It will cause some downfall of yours in this world and the next. And what is worse, let's not talk about bank accounts only. We talk about people who are wealthy. They give their money to someone and they tell them, I need back with 20% more. You say, but isn't that interest? No, it's a profit. What type of a prophet is this? They will call it any name, but it is still interest. Unless they are willing to participate in your business and share the loss, if any, then we are talking business. Otherwise, let's learn from our scholars. And we have many scholars here in Nigeria. Let's learn from our scholars the details. Let's continue to learn because the financial markets and the laws of economics have changed over time and they are continuing to change with different types of currencies and so on. We need to be up to date, knowing what's right and wrong from those who have knowledge of that. If you were to ask me certain things, I will tell you, brother, I have not specialized in that field. Let's find a scholar who has specialized in the field, who knows current day markets, who will be able to talk to you as an economist and explain to you logically and properly what Allah allows and what he does not allow. Sometimes you go to a person who doesn't really know about international markets. They will make everything haram for you and it will become impossible to live. And then you might go to someone who's not really bothered about Islamic rules and they will say, brother, just eat. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We need a balance. We need someone who knows and someone who can teach us and guide us. So it's important to participate in the lessons of this nature that happen not only in this masjid, but I'm sure in many other circles of knowledge. So aklu riba is something that is very serious. Then we have aklu mali yatim, the consumption of the wealth of an orphan. Do you know what that means? When someone dies and you are somehow connected to that estate, to execute that estate properly and to ensure that the dues are given to all those, the widows, the orphans, etc. in a proper manner, 
that is something that Allah has enshrined with a lot of importance. And it is a major sin to be corrupt in that. It's a major sin to cheat and to steal from the widows and orphans. Someone who's innocent, the father has passed away, someone else has passed on. You are made a trustee or you are entrusted with their wealth. Please make sure that you are honest. The, the Quran in Surah An-Nisa at the beginning has verses directed to this in a clear way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding.